All right, so the next section is going to be focused on the generic cross section editor, also uh, referred to as edit curve. And so this feature is a cross section that allows you to directly control the Bezier spline. Um, it's the most complex cross section that we have, but it allows you to model things that you wouldn't be able to do with some of the built in uh, exec types like rounded rectangle or um, super ellipse and things like that. You can use a generic cross section with any geometry that supports cross sections. So wing, fuselage, um, it should say stack, body of revolution and prop. Um, and so there's two ways to use this capability. The first is to just go to the, the cross section tab for the current geometry. Go to the type drop down and click edit curve that will initialize it to um, just a circle. Or you can take your cross section that you have and convert it to a edit curve type. So that will keep the same shape. And this allows you to use something. Um, one of the other cross section types to get your cross section really close to what you want and then convert it and move around the control points um, with a little bit more fine control. So last year, you can see this is what we uh, presented at the OpenVSP workshop. Um, so that's that was the state of the cross section editor GUI at the time. And in 3.23, uh, we completely replaced the cross section editor canvas class with the OpenGL type. So that allows you to zoom and pan, um, put background images in there, basically similar to what you can do in the main OpenVSP model window. Uh, now we have that for your cross section editor. Also added capabilities to change things like the line color and width, um, change the background, border, axis, things like that. Um, similar to, like I said, what you see in the main OpenBSP GUI. Next thing added was an equal arc length reparameterization option, um, and I'll demonstrate that in a little bit here, but that allows you to make some improvements to fix parameterization issues uh, that you may have um, introduced by moving around the control points. The, the GUI overall was just made more user friendly in, in 3.23. Um, you can do to, uh, highlighting for the control, or excuse me, um, hi, control points are highlighted when you click on them, both in the control point list and in the editor. Uh, and the display settings have been added to your XML file as well, so they're saved and loaded back in um, when you close the, the program. So next in 3.24. Uh, fixed a couple of bugs that were uh, present in the first release of this new editor GUI, and you could see that on there right there. Um, so overall, became a lot wider, um, a lot more room to you know, move around the control points and everything. You could zoom in, really get a closer look at, at the cross section that you're editing. An option was added to flip the cross section. That will allow you to model either a front view or a rear view. Um, with that background image in, in the editor. A couple of other options were added for um, improved control of the display options. Last thing on there is that the, the wiki documentation is available if anyone would like to, to take a look at that for some additional details. This slide covers some of the best practices for using the um, generic cross section. So, a lot of times you'll want to start with a less complex shape and then use the convert to see edit um, option to get you an initial good starting point. Another recommendation is to not use the control points to scale the cross section. Use those width and height sli sliders instead. Try to keep your control points um, in that negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 range. Try to use as few of control points as possible. Similar, try to use as few of cross sections as possible when you're you're modeling a um, a stack or a fuselage, something like that. Uh, G1 option is available to to keep your corners smooth. Make sure you don't have any discontinuities there. And then the last thing is just make sure you save uh, fairly often. Um, as always, recommendation for a lot of these uh, OpenVSP capabilities. All right, so I'll go ahead and jump into a demo now. 
So I just went ahead and added a stack. I'm going to come over to the cross section tab. Go to this first cross section here. And now you can see you have this convert C edit button. Or I can change this to an edit curve cross section here. Once I do that, this GUI will pop up. And I'm just going to go through kind of briefly some of these options that are in there. I know I talked about it last year, but I'll just cover them um, briefly to reiterate. Top part, you can initialize the curve to a certain shape. So you know, circle, ellipse, rectangle. And so I could change it to one and click in its shape. You can view the absolute or the non-dimensionalized coordinates for your control points. That'll update it both in the control point list at the bottom and on the screen here. So now when I, I scale, you'll get those um, absolute values. You can turn on symmetry or turn it off. So with it on, everything should uh, be mirrored from the right side to the left side of the cross section. If I turn it off, you can move uh, each side independently. Note that when you turn on symmetry, it will just copy over everything from the right side to the left. So it might delete control points, add control points to the other side. So just something to be um, aware of when you turn that, that feature on. I can convert between linear, P-chip, and cubic Bezier types. Just hit the convert button. Note that when you go through that process, you may lose the shape representation when you go to the, the lower order um, curve types. You can preserve the aspect ratio when you're um, scaling the control points. So when I move height or width, it'll keep that, that ratio between the two of them. Talk about this capability in a second here, um, but If I move this slider around, you can split the curve at a specific U parameter value. So going around, you have 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 5, excuse me, 0 0.75 and 1. So if I enter in something like 0 0.12, I'd expect to add a point right around here. And I could hit split U, and that go ahead, went ahead and added that point there. I can also use this split pick feature to go ahead and just click anywhere on the curve and add a control point. Deleting points, you can walk through using these buttons here. And I can say delete. Or I can just go through similar to split pick, delete pick, and click on a point. Whoops, that's that one there. There we go. And so now on the bottom here, you can control the coordinates of each control point. So you can change the, the X location, Y location, and you also can control the parameterization. So what that is going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is that will change how these control points are connected up between cross sections. So if I move this around, you can see how it stretches the surface there. If I turn on G1 continuity, that will make sure there's a constant slope at that control point. Excuse me, this one here. Now when I control these intermediate control points, the slope stays the same on the other side. Next, I'll, I'll walk through the fixed U feature and the reparameterization. So if I change this to a linear um, type just for, for demonstration, and I go ahead and I add a control point. So right now, let me turn up the tessellation real quick. You can see things a little bit better. So right now, everything um, is looking pretty evenly spaced for the, the tessellation going around the stack. Now, if I move this control point along the curve, so I'm changing its location, but it's keeping the same parameter value. See how this gets stretched over here? So if I click this reparameterization option, 
it will change this u parameter value to make sure everything's um, distributed evenly based on the arc length. That feature allows you to improve your parameterization if, um, if, if moving around the control points kind of changed things around a little bit and stretched your uh, cross section surface. This fixed U button allows you to control if you how you want to reparameterize just on individual sections of the curve. So if I do something like add a control point here. Change this U parameter value. See that stretching taking place there. If I click this fixed U button. And then reparameterize. It will make sure that U value stays the same. So that's what that feature does there. Next, I'll do a quick demo of the background image capability. So if I want to grab a drawing, I can throw that in the background there. I can try to line things up by scaling the background image and moving it around in X and Y. Try to line it up with maybe this cross section up there. And then you could try to line up those control points to, to match that cross section image that you have. So I'd probably start by decreasing the width. That's about right. Increasing the height a little bit. And then I can also move the cross section around by holding the right mouse button to get it to line up. And I could zoom in or zoom out with the middle button as well. And so once I get it pretty close, I can use this lock image feature and that will allow the image to move around with the cross section as I zoom and pan. So that lets me get really close, fine control over certain areas of the cross section. And as I zoom in, if the, the background image is getting a little bit blurry uh, because the, the lines are scaling at different rates, I can increase the thickness and increase the size of the points. I can also change the, the color of the line if I want to. If I have a different color background image and it's hard to see the cross section, I can use that feature there. Um, or this is available to change the color of the points, just a, basically a color wheel. Last one on there, you can flip the image if you need to. Um, and so that's what that toggle does. But Otherwise, those are the main new capabilities that have been introduced over the last uh, year with the generic cross-section editor. I'll go ahead and kind of walk through how I would model this cross-section to line up. Start by making sure the top, the um, excuse me, the cross-section is aligned about the um, axis of symmetry. And since this one is symmetric, I'll turn on symmetry there. So. Need to move this over a little bit. And I'll click the lock image. And now I'll try to look around that cross section for what areas the curve experiences a change. So looks like about there. Down here, there's probably one. So I can add a control point there. And I might need to add one right here too, but let's try to see if we could get close enough without adding one first. I'm just going to move around the control points, try to line things up as best as possible. I'll probably want to enforce G1 continuity on some of these points as well because they seem smooth. Here it looks like it's not, but everywhere else it seems like we have G1 continuity to be enforced.
So that's already looking looking pretty close, and I could spend time to get it even closer if, if needed, but that's about about right. Um, and so I could go through and do that for any other cross sections with this edit curve feature. So it's a very powerful tool, fairly user friendly. And are there any questions that anyone has uh, that I could go over? I don't see any in the chat. You're um, for you now. 